today's video focuses on uh, weather routing which is uh, nothing but a procedure to determine an optimal track for ocean voyages based on sea conditions and a ship's individual response characteristics in waves uh, the weather routing has many benefits of course and uh, the benefits of a ship weather routing services are primarily in time and cost reductions and increased safety uh, if you think about it then uh, severe weather conditions are can be avoided using the process of uh, weather routing and following an optimum route i'll talk about uh, optimum routing later on so there is less probability of vessel getting damaged in heavy weather if a uh, vessel's passage plan is based on a weather routing then there is less chances of cargo shifting as heavy weather is avoided vessel does not experience any kind of heavy rolling pitching or similar motions uh, it's more comfortable for persons on board uh, and it's particularly important for passenger ships where you have passengers who are not used to rolling pitching and experiencing such movements on ships it's also more comfortable for crew on board which will result in uh, their better performance and ships better maintenance uh, the savings in operating cost are derived from reductions in transit time heavy weather encounters, fuel consumption, cargo and hull damage, and more efficient scheduling of dockside activities. Uh, the savings uh, are further increased by fewer emergency repairs, more efficient use of personnel, improved topside working conditions, lower insurance rates as preferred risks under weather routing, and ultimate uh, extended ship operating life. An effective routing service maximizes safety by greatly reducing the probability of severe or catastrophic damage to the ship and injury of crew members. The efficiency and health of the crew is also enhanced by avoiding the heavy weather. This is especially important on modern automated ships with reduced crew and smaller craft such as fishing vessels and yachts. And in terms of principle of weather routing, uh, it is different from climatological routing Climatological routing of vessel is given uh, in various books and charts, such as Ocean Passages of the World, Pilot Charts, etc. Uh, climatological routing is based on the average weather experienced by a ship in a particular season in an ocean. The current and wind directions are of average value for the season, and based on these average values, a route is selected and recommended in these books. If a vessel sails on this route, uh, it is not 100% that she will not experience severe weather. However, weather routing has been made possible by frequent weather observations, including progress charts, prognosis charts, uh, which are available to seafarers in uh, the ocean. And the facilities are quite good in North Atlantic and North Pacific, where weather routing is possible with greater accuracy. However, these facilities are not satisfactory in South Antarctic and South Pacific, and therefore weather routing is not satisfactory on those areas. Uh, weather routing makes uh, use of actual weather conditions as well as uh, weather forecasts in the vicinity of the route being planned. The route is modified if necessary as the voyage proceeds. The route is selected with due consideration to quickest route, that is the great circle route or the fastest route between two points. Sometimes a strategic route is planned which not only takes into account the shortest route combined with other considerations like expected heavy weather damage uh, or other requirements which are special to that vessel. Uh, finally, a vessel has to select an optimum route in which the uh, following considerations are taken into account. Firstly is the shortest distance, which is normally the great circle distance, but it is not necessary that the shortest distance will also be the quickest distance. Then you take into account the currents, the prevailing currents in the area, and the advantage of following currents should be taken into account because that will add to the speed of the vessel uh, increasing the speed of the vessel helps to reach uh, the ports in time. Then the prevailing winds of the season have to be analyzed as well. Uh, that is, winds from ahead reduce the ship's speed considerably as high waves are built up against the ship, whereas beam winds or following winds will not reduce the ship's speed considerably. Uh, if you look into the books, uh, there is a relationship provided between surface wind speed and wave height, which is as follows, where H, which is the wave height in meters, equals to a constant 0.0214 multiplied by the square of the wind speed in meters per second. So V0 is the wind speed in meters per second. Now this formula has an error on the higher side 
and wave height shall be lowered uh, if lower rather if duration of the wind and fetch are lower and the vessel speed is uh, reduced due to the wind uh, as follows because uh, as the wind increases the wave uh, resistance to ships uh, progress also increases the pitching and rolling uh, reduces the ship's speed and also causes severe stresses on the ship the propeller will keep coming out of the water frequently causing more slip of the main engine and less speed and uh, wind can produce direct resistance on the hull especially the superstructure but i'll continue with the factors that should be taken into account uh, but before that uh, uh, if you think about it because we are on the topic of uh, winds and waves here uh, as waves are an important factor in reducing the vessel speed it is important that a vessel's performance in various wave conditions be known before attempting to uh, weather route a particular vessel. Uh, for this, performance curve of the vessel should be constructed by inspecting vessel speed from the previous voyages for the various wind and wave conditions. Separate performance curves should be drawn for light and loaded conditions, and these curves should be extrapolated when necessary. So what you see on your screen here is an example of a cargo ship's performance curve in a light ballast condition where you can see that the ship's uh, speed is on the y-axis and the wave height is on the x-axis and uh, the wave height can be plotted against the condition of the seas whether the seas are following on the beam or head seas and then once the wave height is plotted against the seas uh, you can then trace it to the ship's speed or the ship's speed expected uh, under the following conditions. So, for example, if you have a wave height of 12 meters, draw a vertical line from 12 meters, and depending on whether you have head seas, beam seas, and following seas, connect the vertical line to one of them, whichever you are following, and then draw a horizontal line going towards the ship's speed, and you will get an idea of uh, what kind of uh, speed will your ship be doing under a certain wave height and the prevailing wave or uh, sea conditions. Alright, so these curves are drawn assuming that the ship is doing full RPM even for uh, very high waves coming from ahead. If not actually done, uh, then same can be extrapolated. But I keep on continuing with the factors that should be considered when deciding on or selecting on an optimum route. So the other factors are ice at sea where vessel has to plan a route which keeps her out of the iceberg infested waters as well as pack ice. Vessel has also to consider ice accumulation on main deck on route. Then vessel should also consider weather passing through the areas where fog is expected. Uh, in foggy conditions, vessel has to reduce her speed and vessel is at higher risk of collision with other ships in the vicinity. And finally, it also must consider any special requirements of the vessel. For example, a timber carrier should not pass through the areas of very low temperatures, which can cause ice accretion on deck. And that would mean ice secretion on the cargo itself, which uh, leads to uh, impact on its uh, stability. Now, uh, weather routing is considered because the situation on board changes dramatically and uh, most often very suddenly in case of a hazard. So be it damage or fallout of a technical device or uh, component or an average like collision or grounding, the demands on uh, weather routing and route recommendations change as well. A vessel healing or with damage in the rudder engine behaves different in sea as the intact one and needs therefore adapted maneuvering and route advice. The destination would alter as well because you might need to seek a nearest port of refuge where the repairs can be carried out. So provision of optimum route advice for ships in degraded condition therefore has to consider additional changing uh, maneuvering and propulsion capability. In difference to the situation for optimum weather routing, this information is not static and not predefinable for all cases. Such a routing advice tool therefore depends strongly on the situation assessment. So the current situation your ship is in, and that is what it will be depending on. All right. Uh, so for, for, myth, for the weather routing to be carried on on board vessel, the vessel must be equipped with a weather facsimile recorder for the master to carry out weather routing. Uh, master has to first select the optimum route as uh, I explained earlier. And this route takes into account the main objective of selecting the route as well as environmental conditions likely to be encountered. Now the synoptic and prognostic charts are required at frequent intervals during the entire weather routing process. Now just imagine your ship is supposed to be going from port A to port B 
A is the port of destination and B is the port of arrival. Once you have determined the initial route, then what you can do for weather routing is that uh, you draw it on the chart and then draw alternate courses from the initial point A at say about 10 degree intervals and plot it on the either side of the um, main course or the original course. Now from the 24 hours weather prognosis chart, the relative wind and wave direction on these courses is calculated and 24 hour distances is thus plotted. The line joining these points is called the locus one as you can see on the chart. The line uh, from the locus one each of these points alternative courses are again plotted at about say 10 degree interval. However, the courses which uh, will take the ship away from the original course are discarded and ignored. Then 48 hours prognosis chart is consulted and locus 2 is plotted the same way. This method is repeated several times and subsequent locus are thus plotted. Finally, a point is selected which is nearest on the locus near to the destination point and hence the route is uh, planned backwards from point B to A uh, through the point uh, that is nearest to the original course. Once the track has been chosen, its usefulness should be reviewed during the voyage by checking on the latest weather reports and prognostic situations. All right, now automation has enabled ship routing agencies to develop a realistic minimum time tracks. Now computation of minimum time tracks make use of a navigation system to compute the route distance, time and route, ETAs and to provide six hourly DR synoptic positions that is the dead reckoning positions for the range of the dynamic forecast for the ship's current track. So what kind of waves, wind, currents the ship will be facing. A surveillance system to survey wind, seas, fog and ocean currents obtained from the dynamic and climatological fields. Then an environmental constraint system imposed as part of the route selection and surveillance process. Constraints are the upper limits of the wind and seas desired for the transit. They are determined by the ship's loading, speed capability and vulnerability. The constraint system is an important part of the route selection process and acts as a warning system when the weather and sea forecast along the present track exceeds predetermined limits. Ship speed characteristics are also used to approximate ship speed of advance while transiting the forecast sea. Criteria for route selection reflect a balance between the master's desired levels of speed, safety, comfort and concentration of operations such as fleet maneuvers, fishing, towing, etc. and also the ETA. Ship weather routing services are being offered by many nations and these include Japan, UK, Russia, Netherlands, Germany and the United States. Also, several private firms provide routing services to shipping industry clients. Several PC-based software applications have also become available marking weather routing or making weather routing available to virtually everybody at sea. There are generally two types of routing services available. The first uses techniques similar to the Navy's OTSR systems to forecast uh, conditions and compute routing recommendations which are then broadcast to the vessel. Then the OTSR, if you don't know what OTSR is, OTSR stands for the Optimum Track Ship Routing. Uh, that is the ship routing service of the US Navy, which utilizes short range and extended range forecasting techniques in route selection and surveillance procedures. The short range dynamic forecasts of three to five days are derived from meteorological equations. These forecasts are computed at least twice daily from a database of Northern Hemisphere surface and upper air observations and include surface pressure, upper air constant pressure heights and the spectral wave values. A significant increase in data input, particularly from satellite information over ocean areas, is also available. The second type of weather routing assembles and processes weather and sea condition data and transmits this to the ships at sea for onboard processing and generation of route recommendation. The OTSR system allows for greater computer power to be applied to the routing task because powerful computers are available ashore. The second system allows greater flexibility to the ship's master in changing parameters, evaluating various scenarios, selecting routes and displaying data. We've talked about the benefits of the weather routing system, so I will not go back to this again. But uh, let me tell you about this, uh, why this uh, weather routing system uh, is important. Now, I don't know whether you've heard about the case of the Derbyshire. The 
the investigation into the loss of the bulk carrier derby share in a typhoon actually concluded that uh, the weather routing information provided to the ship could have helped it to avoid the typhoon that eventually caused its a loss had it been accurate or adequate now meteorological forecasting and communications have advanced considerably since the loss of that ship in 1980 however weather routing services uh, remain relatively unregulated and mainly a commercial tool now following the presentation of uh, new evidence from the surveys of the wreck of the carrier derbyshire which was lost of okinawa in 1980 the government of the united kingdom reopened the formal investigation into the loss of the ship the investigation found that derbyshire had been lost in typhoon orchid despite having been supplied with weather routing advice the court actually concluded that the information provided to the master was insufficient to assist him in effectively avoiding the worst weather associated with the typhoon however of course like i said before uh, the quality of weather routing services has undoubtedly improved since this incident now solas requires a voyage be subjected to a voyage plan and it mainly states that all known navigation hazards and weather conditions should be accounted for should be taken into account when planning a voyage uh, it basically safeguards the master's right to deviate from advice given that might conflict with his or her professional judgment uh, commercial pressures can force masters to follow routes that uh, take unacceptably high risk and uh, weather routing actually protects the master from doing so and provides the master uh, with some protection towards uh, keeping the ship safe now advice by the weather routing services formulated uh, remotely from the ship but it may be regarded by some owners or charters as providing better information than weather forecast now this means that um, the weather routing uh, advice is uh, given by people who are sitting ashore and they all although they have advanced computer systems and uh, technology available to them and they are not there at sea with you on the ship so of course uh, the advice is provided to the master but it is the master's decision at the end of the day and uh, master may deviate from the weather routing although if tomorrow something happens you might have to justify why you did so but the final decision remains with the master on whether they want to follow the weather routing advice or not depending on what the master feels is uh, more safe for his or her ship now master's confidence in the advice being offered may be diminished if that advice does not reflect the conditions that are evident at the ship's location and because people advising you Uh, are sitting ashore uh, so sometimes that can be a bit challenging uh, minimum standards required for weather routing services is that uh, the met meteorological information should when possible be provided prior to departure to enable voyage planning and adjusting uh, the master should be provided with the source of the data where possible and level of accuracy and probability of changes in weather patterns indicated information should include sea and swell data in the form of significant height of waves and if possible direction of swells the advice should take into account full account of the speed and handling characteristics of the individual vessel and consider the ability of the vessel to avoid weather systems that are moving faster than the ship prior to departure clear instructions should be provided to the master for communication channels available between the ship and those who are providing the weather routing service the weather routing service or weather routing advice should be provided at regular intervals appropriate to weather conditions at ship's position and of its projected route so for example if the ship is going towards an area where there is frequent trs or there is a trs or there is a low pressure that might turn into a trs then of course the more frequent advice should be provided to the master the interval should vary according to the rate of change of conditions service should enable masters to make request for advice at interim periods the system should be interactive so all submissions of advice from w or weather routing service should require a response by master minimum response should at least include the ship's position course and speed they should also encourage master to provide feedback information regarding the weather conditions masters should also be encouraged to indicate their preferred route taking into consideration his or her own professional judgment the weather routing advice should take into account of the ship's routing systems to be encountered the weather sufficient serum is available for the vessel 
all known navigational hazards need to operate in interest of the environmental protection and need to operate within load land convention and need for essential maintenance that affects safe operation so weather routing advice should take into account of uh, relevant routing systems to be encountered during the voyage uh, sufficient sea room for the ship to make safe passage throughout the voyage uh, all known navigation hazards and conditions the need for ship to operate within constraints resulting from compliance with the international load land convention and the need for essential maintenance that affects the ship's safe operation that may be compromised by environmental conditions the weather routing service should include a once a daily report to owners or operators giving the master uh, master's report now uh, latest systems on board vessels these days uh, have the conventional hull response monitoring systems uh, rarely making use of the shipboard measured data whereas more advanced shipboard weather routing systems process weather data comprising wind and sea wave information to continuously compute the ship's response during the voyage uh the independent sensors are installed uh, on the ship for computing information example for a container ship a uh, 6 degrees of freedom of gyro a vertical accelerometer at the bow and two strain gauges mounted on deck stringers are mounted on a ship now they have these essential sensors which uh, which uh, sense the vessel's movement and they also sense the uh, weather conditions experience the wind the weather the waves these sensors are fitted externally on the hull as well and uh, they using a, a very advanced and sophisticated computers uh, they actually compute and they they assess the kind of uh, uh, the motion that the vessel is experiencing under particular weather conditions and they provide a routing service or instant or real time routing services to the vessel on board the ship itself uh, where two or more governments have a common interest in a particular area uh, they also formulate a joint proposal for the ship routing system with integrated measures and procedures for cooperation between the jurisdiction of the proposing governments if any bilateral or multilateral agreements have been reached pertaining to the joint proposal then reference should be made to such agreements uh, companies that provide such services are uh, weather routing incorporated ami cmap smhi spos seaware weather news there are a few companies which are there uh, that provide these services and depending of course on your ship's owner and whether they have subscribed to these services then your ships may be able to obtain information uh, which is required for safe navigation of the vessel from these companies and that's pretty much it guys sorry about the long length of the video but there's so much to talk about weather routing and i try to keep this videos short for you to hold interest um, so i hope this was good enough for you to be able to answer questions in the exam whether it's written or oral i'll see you soon with my next video bye for now